Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a project site template for use in projects online. The idea behind the project site template is that for each project in your project online environment you can have a project site that can be used by project managers, team members and anybody else interested in the project to collaborate on documents, issues, risks and any other metadata you might want to capture about your projects, any other documentation, etc. etc. It's even got a shared OneNote, really, really cool stuff. Now let's jump in and I'll show you how to create a template for your own use. To do this, I'm going to click on projects here. And if you've been following along, I am actually creating a whole new enterprise project type called HR. I'm going to create an HR project. That one actually has the default project site template associated with it. And I'm going to come in here and just give it a name. I'm going to call it project site temp one. And you'll see why I've done that shortly. So I'm creating an actual project in Project Online, but I'm just going to leverage the project site from that project. as the basis of my project site template. So when you first create a project, you see the project detail pages that you have associated with your enterprise project type. And then I'm gonna see project site. Now it does take a minute or two to create typically. Let's see if it's done yet. Not just yet, okay. One thing you might wanna check when you're doing this is that for your enterprise project types, when you create them, it automatically creates a project site. So I'm going to check that whilst we wait for it to be done. I'm going to click on Enterprise Project Types. I'm going to click on HR Project. I'm going to notice here that every time I create a project that we are going to automatically create a site on Next Publish. So whenever the project is created, Project Online does a publish for me and it should be good. All right, so we've checked that. I'm gonna save that off, didn't make any changes. I'm gonna click back on projects here on the left-hand side. And you can see actually, in the project center, you can see any icons associated. This will actually open up the project schedule for me. Once you've got issues and risks down the line, and documentation, those will show up in this indicators column too. All right, I'm gonna click on my project site temp one. And I'm gonna click on project site. Killed enough time, should be ready. There it is. Probably could have just hit pause on that video, but I gave you a little nugget instead. I hope you liked it. All right, so this is the default project site template that we can use. Now this is pretty much good to go if you want to just use the standard, but as an, as an enterprise, you're probably going to make some changes to this, right? First thing I always do, remove this stuff, right? You can dig into it if you like, I just remove it. It's just stuff I don't need to see. All right, so what have we got on the page? Well, down the left-hand side, let's explore. We have a notebook. That's actually OneNote, OneNote integration. Remember, when you've got um, the permissions set up and synchronized, as we've done in our enterprise project type for our project site, all of the permissions are gonna be synchronized. Take a look at my creating an enterprise project type video for more information there. We'll start again in the playlist of this series and you will see all about what I'm talking there. So, notebook. Uh, in here, everybody that has access to the project site will be able to look at and share the OneNote notebook. Let's take a look at it real quick. You do have the option to obviously open that OneNote notebook in your notebook on your desktop if you like as well. So you don't actually have to open it in the web app. You can open it in the desktop app and it will save a bookmark there so you don't need to necessarily come back to the project site to update your OneNote for the project. I'm going to click back and out of that. We have documents libraries. In here, we can actually store any documents associated with the project. So I'm going to come in here and you can see we have a Word document here. We have an Excel document workbook. You can have these as just basic standard content types. Or you can upload an existing file. Right, so I'm going to come in here, click files. 
and there's lots of videos of me there. There you go, I'm going to upload this video right here to the project site. It's going to take a minute or two, but it'll upload. You can upload videos, documents, whatever the kit, whatever you like. What you can also do is actually on this drop down, you can actually set up content types to be displayed in here. And therefore you'll be able to see all your standard templates for your document libraries right here. The nice thing about that is you can actually centrally manage those pro pro uh, document content types so that they trickle down to all project sites. So what you're going to have is every project site is going to have the latest templates of you know, project initiation documents, financial documents, whatever the case may be. You can do that. I'll show you that in a future video. and I'll post the link on this one. There it is. Okay, moving on. So that's the document library. We have tasks. This is synchronized with the project schedule. My project schedule doesn't have much going on right now, but um, this would be synchronized with that. I have a calendar. Think of this as just a team calendar, right? It's a note virtual notice board. In fact, what I do in here is I'll actually come in here and I'll rename that one to be team calendar. Just so people don't get confused with the project calendar, right? Projects. This actually takes me out and back to the project center. All right. Oh, look, we can see that we have documents associated with this project. If I click on that document, it'll take me straight back to the project site where I'll be able to click on documents and see that I've just uploaded a file here. So, we've got team calendar, project. So, it's kind of navigation back to the project itself. This project details takes us back to the project detail pages. So if I go and click on this one, it takes you back out to here where I can see the project detail pages and I can then navigate back to project site. So I sometimes rename these links to make it a bit more fluid but it is what it is. Um, we have deliverables, issues and risks. Now these are specific to project online all right so issues and risks that's a project management terminology if i click on risks here you can see that i can create a new risk let's just test it out shall we test risk who's the owner going to be so just to give you some context on these the owner is just somebody that manages and owns the risk I'll make it tom henry perfect who's it assigned to this will actually show up that this particular risk is assigned to somebody and they'll be able to see that in their issues and risks when they're managing their issues and risks okay pretty cool let's put it on tom henry again is it active postponed or closed if it's active it will show up in that person's assigned issues and risks if it's closed it won't show up we're going to make this active category one two or three you can actually update these categories to be something more relevant to yourself I'm actually going to show you how to do that shortly. Uh, due date, when is this risk going to happen? Probability and impact, this is actually between 0 and 100%. I'm going to go for 80%. What's the impact? Between 0 and 9. I'm going to say it's a 9. Pretty high probability, high impact. What's the cost? 100,000. It's going to give you a risk adjusted cost of if this risk happens here's the problem description of this i'm just going to put it in test what are we going to do to make sure this doesn't happen test what's the contingency plan if it does happen test big test uh it went wrong what happened so we put in here the trigger description when did it happen or well, you can specify your own value here All right i'm not going to get into that too much i'm going to press save so you know how to save issues and risks in project sites so here it is here's my risk I can see it's active exposure I'll be able to see cost exposure I don't like this category I want to rename those categories well to do that we click on list and we click on list settings come on list settings there we go and down in category I can click in this say in a choice I'm not going to do anything too crazy here. I'm just going to say high, uh, major, 
I'll buy now. All right, something like that. That will do the job for me. You can call them whatever you want. It's different categorizations of your issues and risks. So now if I go back to my risks, if I click in here, I'll be able to update the category. Edit item. To major, minor, or blank. Great. So you can make changes to these. However, big warning do not delete any of the out of the box fields in these issues and risks lists. If you do that, you're going to create all kinds of problems. If you want to learn how to remove things, you can do that with some VB code. For that, you will need to subscribe to my channel and actually join as a member and I will post you you'll be able to see that video you can adjust these but do not do it because the integration from your project site to the project online is very tight for example if you want your risk to show up it'll be active if it's closed then it'll be closed that will decide whether it shows up in project online or not as a little icon I'm gonna say active and you'll actually see that in the project center things like that if you delete things in here it will break the project site okay so just be very careful don't delete anything you can hide them that's another video but that's way out of the scope of this one press save here all right so we we know how to adjust things i'm actually going to delete this because i don't want to have an issue or risk in every project and this is going to be a template that i'm going to use so I'm actually going to item and delete that item. There we go. So we don't want actual information in there. You can, All right? Issues, very similar thing. You come in here and create a new issue. Not going to get into that today, but you can adjust the columns and things like that a little bit within the confines of what's out of the box. You can add columns to your issues and risks list. You can also create a new list. Let's do it. So actually, I'm going to come in here and in fact, I'm going to go to site contents and I click new list. I'm going to call this one change, change requests. Let's create. All right, and there it is. Okay, so once change request has been created, that's a new list. And in fact, when I click home here, it'll appear in my list. So obviously the recent one, but we also have a new change request list here ready to go. What I need to do in here is add some columns to my risk, right? To my change request. I can do this quite quickly and easily in here. I'm gonna say, uh, it's gonna be just a single line of text. So change request, um, requester. Not sure that's even a word. And I'll just press save. So we're adding new columns in here. And cost, right? So how much is this change request gonna cost us? And we'll go for currency. Boom, boom, boom save it all right we have our change request list good to go when i come back to home i'll be able to click in change requests and click new major change who's the requester how much is it going to cost i'm not going to do that again all right one last thing that i like to do in these is if i come back to home 
I'm going to click in the risks list here. I'm going to click the list, list settings. And what I'm going to do is actually, I like to go to advanced settings for my issues and risks lists. I'm going to disable attachments. The reason being, if there's an attachment for a risk or an issue, I want that to be stored in the project site document library along with everything else so that people can see that it shows up as an icon etc etc that is about all I do in here the other thing is you can have the default experience for the site or the classic or the new experience that's just the SharePoint terminology um, you can see that in fact this project site has some that are in the new experience and that are in the classic so I generally come in here and specify I want the classic I'm used to the classic but you might want the new but come in here for each list and specify the experience you want. I'm going to stick with classic for this. Just make sure you're consistent. So you see the risks list. If I click on the issues list, it looks different. So this is the new experience, right? So again, I can come in. And, you know, you can't even see the, uh, the, the 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 up here where you have the old navigation. I have to come in here. And here, you see, I'm not used to this. <laughs> in here and click list settings and two different navigational areas so again on that list you click advanced settings come down classic and actually will remove attachments press ok see I've done this few times very quick Stroll, scrolling around and that's done now when I go to the issues list I think it's just propagating, but that, that will show up in the classic experience now. Alright, so back to home. So I can see all my different lists. I can see my document libraries. Coming back to document libraries, what you can do in here is store standardized templates. Now the reason I list, left this one here is because when I save this off as a site template, it's going to ask me, do you want to include the content which would be do you want to include the files or the issues and risk items in that project site that you've already created if you press yes at that point then it would save off this I'm actually going to leave it there save it as a template and then say remove it I don't want to include the content to save it as a template I will click home this will bring me back to the home page of my project site and from there I click on the gear icon and click on site settings and in here I can click save site as template somewhere there it is I'm going to call this HR site temp one again HR site temp one. I don't know why I capitalized that one. Do I want to include the content? There you go. Yes, no. I'm gonna say no, which is just don't don't include it. Version one. No one's really gonna see that. Press OK. All right, operation completed successfully. I'll be able to go and see that in the solution gallery if I want to see where that template's stored. I don't. What I'm now going to do is associate this project site template with my enterprise project type HR. To do this, I need to come out of my project site template. So I'm actually going to, have to browse back to PWA settings. It's going to close that one. Come down to enterprise project types and go into my HR project. Which is the enterprise project type I created in my previous video and come down where it says site template there it is HR site temp one Press save now whenever I create a new HR project you will get the HR project site template you can include branding you can include all kinds of cool fanciful stuff I kind of scraped the surface 
and we'll show you the mechanics behind saving those templates and associating them with your enterprise project types. Thanks very much for watching. We'll chat soon.